Please summarize the distinctions and impacts of residential infill project resulting from approval or rejection of the historic district. Good question. So I think everyone in this room is familiar with a, a, a project of the Portland uh, Bureau of Planning and Sustainability called the Residential Infill Project. The Residential Infill Project um, is in the concept refinement and zoning code language drafting process. So for those of you who were paying extra close attention, in December the City Council adopted a concept for how we would manage growth and uses <clears throat> within our single family zones. Most of East Moreland is in a single family zone. That concept would reduce the scale and allowed height of houses that are currently allowed and also open up opportunities to add additional dwelling units on sites that today may only allow one house and an ADU. Part of that concept would allow for the internal conversion of existing single family houses into multiple dwelling units citywide and allow for new duplex and or triplex construction within a geography that's still to be determined that may or may not include East Moreland. So the concept of the residential infill project is to reduce the allowed scale of houses, and that's not to say that it's going to reduce the size of houses that you might be seeing built in East Moreland, but reduce what's allowed in the zoning code, where today it would be allowed to build, you would be allowed to build something on the magnitude of a 6,000 square foot house. Under the concept, that house may be limited to about 2,500 square feet. With that would come, in some areas, the ability to do multiple dwelling units. If you became a historic district, whatever is allowed in the base zone, whether that's a duplex or a triplex or an accessory dwelling unit, would still be allowed with the historic district. But with the historic district, you'd be subject to historic resource review or design review to ensure that changes or new construction was compatible with the district as a whole. Also, the reduction in allowed house size would still apply to the historic district. So you would not see proposals to build houses that would be allowed today to be 6,000 square feet. You may see proposals for 2,500 square foot houses still subject to historic resource review. So if your interest in the historic district is to stop things like duplexes, that's not going to happen with the historic district overlay. That duplex either is going to go into a contributing building or it's going to be a new construction project subject to historic design review. I beg to differ on that because for several reasons. One is um, what, what Brandon's saying is in essence true. There, there's no argument with what is um, technically possible. But the fact is that putting triplexes on the corners re is essentially requires demolition. The other thing that the, um, the Bureau continues to attempt to claim is they're limiting house size to 2,500 square feet. Actually, they're not. And the slide that Tom showed of duplexes on every 50 by 100 lot um, is what would be allowed under the um, residential infill project. And those houses that um, were independently, we independently analyzed what's allowed. And when you include the basements, a raised up basement and a half attic, you get closer to four to 5,000 square feet. So um, yeah, we're not gonna build 6,000 square feet foot houses, but we're gonna see 4,000 square foot houses, which is bigger than almost any of the houses in East Moreland now. So you really, you know, this claim that it's, it's going to reduce scale is actually a very false claim and uh, one that has not been carefully examined by the Bureau. Thank you. And, and I just want to say a loud size is different than what we're seeing built today. The average size house is not always maxing out the allowance for size, but today we allow a very large house to be built, and in some neighborhoods we do see those very large houses. So the, the residential infill concept is to reduce the allowed scale, which is our intent. It doesn't necessarily mean that we'll be creating brand new small, tiny houses. I, I think the other thing to keep in mind is that the um, you know, a duplex could be built on every 50 by 100 lot under the residential infill project. 
But again, if you, if you have to tear down a contributing house to build one of those duplexes, it's not going to happen. Um, what you could do, what we could see, if the neighborhood changed in, in character in some way in the future, is people subdividing their houses. I mean, this is a very difficult and complex process. Very few people are going to undertake it, but it is theoretically possible. So, um, and the same thing is true with it with the triplexes on every corner. And the same is true with the combination of the house plus two duplexes that would be allowed under the residential infill project. Thank you. 